Hey guys, we're back in the kitchen with uh, some DSR Farm stuff, and they've got half chickens. And for those of you that don't know what that is, that is a chicken that got cut in half. So they don't raise them like this. They actually raise whole chickens and then they cut them in half because they walk around and eat better that way. But anyway, um, we're gonna do a roast, uh, roast chicken with some potatoes and uh, carrots and onions and stuff. What we're gonna do tonight is put this in a brine. And if you've seen my other chicken video, you kind of know what's going on. But I've got a half a gallon of apple juice. Uh -huh. Heat it up just a little bit, not to a boil or anything, probably a little over 100 degrees. And that's just gonna help this salt mix in and dissolve a little bit better. But my ratio on this is a gallon of juice to one cup of salt. It's a half a gallon of apple juice for this, so I've got a half a cup of salt in that because of math. Most brines, you can keep doing that. Most brines call for salt and sugar, but since apple juice is already sweet, I'm omitting everything but the salt. You can go ahead and put some aromatics and stuff in there if you wanted to, but I'm keeping this super simple, just apple juice, salt, and chicken. So we got the chicken down in there. It's covered with this apple juice and the salt. We're gonna keep it in here for 24 hours, and then we'll cook it tomorrow. What this does is it keeps lean meat from drying out as you're cooking it, because like chicken and pork, it doesn't have a lot of fat and stuff like that has a tendency to dry out. So we're basically making moisture go into the meat with this brine. But anyway, we'll come back in 24 hours and get this thing ready to go in the oven. All right, so it's been 24 hours. Uh, 12 hours is probably suffice on the brine on this chicken right here, but I've just got it and I've kind of patted the skin down dry on that and it's sitting there. Um, I've got some potatoes, carrots, and onions cut up. There's two potatoes, which I mean, it's gonna depend on what size potato there is, I guess. Um, but a cool trick on like round vegetables that don't slice good, if you'll cut them in half that way, they'll sit flat on your cutting board and then you can slice them that way. And I got these sliced really thin, everything, so it cooks pretty fast because this is just a half a bird, so it should cook pretty fast. And we're just gonna put a little bit of oil on top of these and just to kind of get them wet and I'm gonna put a little garlic powder, salt and pepper on them just to kind of shake them around and get them a little flavor going. What I'm gonna do now is just kind of separate the skin from the meat all the way around this as best I can so we can get some seasoning between the skin and the meat. Just kind of slowly work this up and get in between. the skin separated from most of the meat there and then I've got some butter that's softened or maybe slightly past softened as it looks like and then I got some seasoning um, and it's uh, just like tastes salty and a little peppery garlic powder onion powder and sagey and that's what I was really going for because I'm planning on uh, doing something with some leftovers on this which is another good thing to think about when you're cooking a relatively large meal is what can I do with the leftovers if I don't want to just have this again exactly this way the next night or so but anyway so I'm just gonna mix some of this in with this butter and then I'm gonna put that in between the skin and the meat so under the skin and everything, and I'm just putting what's left inside the chicken here, and then I'll put a little bit on the outside of the chicken and lay it on top of these vegetables. Chicken laid on top of the vegetables and butter is all on top of that, and then while the oven was preheating to 450, I had the skillet heating in there with it, and I'm gonna whip up some cornbread since the oven's on, I'm just gonna go ahead and bake them both at the same time. Uh, I got two cups of self-rising cornmeal here, and a cup and a quarter of milk and a quarter cup of oil. I'm just gonna mix that up. I didn't have an egg, so I think this is gonna be okay. If it's not, I'm gonna blame it on the egg, but it could be something else. But anyway, I'm just gonna mix this up. And the reason you want your skillet hot when you pour this in there is you kinda want the bottom to start cooking before the rest of it does. And that should keep it from uh, sticking. 
little bit of vegetable on the bottom of this too, like a little more than just getting it wet, like where you can just start to see it running around. And that's also hot. So I'm gonna dump this in, and it should probably sizzle just a little bit. Yeah. And we'll get both these in the oven. The cornbread's gonna take about 30 minutes, um, and I'm gonna check on the chicken in 30 minutes. It may take just a little bit longer. For 25 minutes, and uh, it's done. I'm gonna go around the edge of this with a butter knife, and it's already freely moving. So that's a pretty good sign, I think. Um, the chicken was about 125 degrees on the breast, and it needs to get up to about 160 or so. So I kicked it on for like 10 more minutes, and we'll take a look at it here in a minute and let this cool. Out of the oven, the chicken needs to rest for about 20 minutes. Uh, the thigh internal temperature is around 175, and the breast is between 165 and 170. I just kind of mixed these vegetables back up in with all the juice and stuff that come out of that. And the carrots are just a little bit under and I'm gonna stick them back in the oven while that's resting um, and then this cool thing here with the cornbread goes something like that bam look at that cornbread anyway so I'm gonna let those hang out I'm gonna stick this back in and we'll come back in just a second I don't know if I said this while ago, this cooked right at 45 minutes in the oven before it got up to temperature. And then I put the vegetables back in for like another 10 minutes. Um, and then this rested for 15 or 20 minutes. Anyway, yeah, that's about all there is to it. I'm going to just uh, pull the leg and thigh away from the breast, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. And then I'll slice this drumstick off and plate that up.